Hey, what's up everyone? This is Jonathan Allen at Floodwater Studios. Today, we're talking about how to set up our I.O. section, our inputs and our outputs. Let's hop into that. Hey, welcome back, guys. Hey, thanks for joining us. And while you're here, why don't you go ahead real quick and hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Drop us a comment. Let us know you're here. We'd love to connect with you guys. But today we're hopping into that I.O. section, like I said. So on the desktop here, as you can see, um, we're going to start fresh with everything. Now, I have hot corners set up on my Mac. So if I come up here, I get all the, the fun stuff. Um, if I go into other... I'm going to look for the audio MIDI setup. So within the audio MIDI setup here, we can see everything that's plugged into your computer right now, all your audio devices. Now this is going to differ visually from the PC side of things. Um, so if you are working on a PC, I apologize. I don't exactly know how to do that because I haven't used PC in many, many, many years. Um, but I know there's ways to do it. I just don't know those ways, so I apologize. But on Mac, we're going to look at what we have here and what we want to do because I have the 18i20 and I have the 2i2, both by Focusrite, amazing audio interfaces, very pristine preamps that are in these, very clear, crisp, love these preamps, uh, love these interfaces in general. And <clears throat> But I want to use both of them because I have very specific purposes for both of them, especially the 2i2, and we'll hop into that in just a moment. But to link them together, you're going to want to click the plus sign down here on the bottom left and click on create aggregate device. Now, I have already done this. Essentially, this is what it looks like right here. So aggregate device, the 18i20, we want this to be our main source for everything. And then the 2i2 is the secondary that goes with it. So you can see the 18i20 is in the, the gray um, channels here. The 2i2 is in these teal ones. So everything is linked together now. One device, and I've labeled this studio, so I know when I go into my DAW, which is Studio One Professional 6 right now, Everything is set to the one. It's called studio because I'm in my studio. So right now, that's what we're going to do. So let's hop into studio one. And now you can see all of your projects that you have going on, your different songs. Right here in the middle, though, we want to take a look at setup. So if you haven't done the aggregate device before, if this is the first time, what we're going to want to do is click here. So yours is probably going to say something different. Mine says studio because it's my default, but we're going to click here, which is going to allow us to change our playback device and recording device. So mine, like I said, it's already set to studio, but if you click the drop down, you can see all the other things I have plugged in also. So I could click on the 18i20 by itself if I wanted. I could do the 2i2 by itself if I wanted, but I want to stick with studio because I have them linked and I'll show you why. So we're going to go ahead. We're just going to open a session here. This is a song we've been working on, uh, part of Eli's album, and it's going really great. This song's awesome. I'm not even going to play you a sneak peek of this yet because I, I feel it's this song is easily one of my favorites on the album, and I think you guys are going to love it too. But now, uh, real quick, because we do want to open the mix tab the mix window, I've added a second monitor to my setup here. So I have my main uh, uh, screen on the left-hand side here, which is what you see uh, that has all of our tracks. And then on the separate screen over here, I have the actual mix window itself. So all my faders are over there. Uh, but if I pop that back over, I can make it one again by itself. So here... On the mix screen, we want to take a look at this I.O. section. So in I.O., it's going to show us all of our inputs and all of our outputs. Everything is one-to-one. -one. So what we want to do, input one is going to go to the Scarlet 1, 2 to Scarlet 2, 3, Scarlet 3, so on and so forth. So one thing that I have talked about in the other videos as well is on your tracks, 
in your your regular uh, recording window here. Color coding, labeling, making sure you can find things very quickly when you're going through the whole process. The same thing can be true, or is true, I should say, for the actual ins and outs for things. Outputs, depending on how you have everything routed, not so much. I've only got one pair of studio monitors, so that's just the, the main output. But inputs is, is very crucial because you don't want to keep thinking, what was plugged into channel one? Which microphone? No, 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 no. Okay, so that microphone's on here. This no. Let's take away all that confusion. Let's simplify this. Now, channel one on the 18i20, it's always, always a quarter inch cable for us. Now, with this quarter inch cable, I, whatever we need essentially to, to use it for, but channel one is always a quarter inch just so I always have that ready to go. Now, channel two, as you can see here, I have it labeled desk mic. This guy right here. Right now, it's the PreSonus PD70. Sometimes it is my Focusrite microphone. Sometimes it's one of the Aston microphone. It's whatever I have it set up for. It's always labeled desk mic. That way I can see it. But let's finish this out. And I'll show you how quick and easy this is to do. So input three, it's always set up to my Aston Spirit microphone. It's off camera right now, but trust me, it's there. So we're just going to change this to Aston Spirit. <coughs> And then we just tab down, goes to the next one. Now, channel four is always set up off camera as well. I have, you may be able to see it. I have my Vox AC15 down here. I always have two microphones on my, uh, my amp. And the first one is a Golden Age Products MK2 Active Ribbon. Uh, it's a great microphone. Really warm, lush sound for everything, especially on a guitar amp. Really helps cut down those harsh highs and those kind of mid highs for things. Just rounds. It's great. So I have, we're just going to call it the ribbon mic because I've only got one. And then the second one I have on there is just, you know, the tried and true SM57. So 57's on there, slightly off center of the cone, little off access just to give some coloration for things. Um... But we have that set up, channel 6, 7, and 8, don't have anything set up there. Now, what I do have are these two down at the bottom, the tube, MPL, and MPR. So I have the two tube preamps that I've talked about previously. They're plugged into my Focusrite 2i2. That 2i2 is running into my 18i20 using some other inputs that are back there um, to allow me to use these two preamps to get the the coloration or the tone, uh, the warmth from those tubes to a microphone, to a guitar, to a bass, whatever we want to use it for. So those I have set up down here at the bottom. Now one thing that we want to do, once you have everything set up, once you have it exactly routed the the way that you want it, we're going to hit make default. This is going to ask you, do you really want to do that? We're going to say yes. So now everything is set. So when we hit OK, say uh, this bass guitar. So bass guitar is set to input one because we were using, you know, the quarter inch cable for it. But as you can see now, everything is labeled. So if we wanted it to be the desk mic, we could choose that. If we wanted to use the spirit, we could choose that. If we wanted to grab the ribbon off of the guitar amp and use the ribbon mic for something specifically, you know, otherwise, that's fine. We can do that. We know exactly what is what and how it's set up. If we want to use one of the, the tube preamps, we can choose one of these at the bottom. Six, seven, and eight, we can do whatever we want with those. Um, now, what happens... If you pull up an old session and you didn't have everything set up already, maybe you had a different audio interface, maybe um, you've made changes since you were in that, that tune or that session, that's really a quick fix too. So if you pop over to the IO section again, once you have everything pulled up, you're going to see whatever it's set to, and then you're just going to hit reset to default. It's going to ask you if you want to do it. You hit yes. And then 
bam, right there. It sets everything up to exactly what you've just saved. And then going forward, anything else you do, you can make sure that everything is labeled. You know exactly what it is. You know exactly where to find it. And you're going to be really good to go. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them down below. We love connecting with you guys. Until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Talk to you later. Bye.